Welcome to the shooting show. This week it's a triple bill on the roebuck with me in East Yorkshire. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. This April might have been the coldest on record, but it takes more than a bit of frost to stop me going out after a roebuck. It's a tad cold this morning. Last time I was in action, I was guiding New Zealander hunter Daryl Crimp into the book of a lifetime. So just to prove I can't be outdone, I'm heading out on a solo stalk. There's plenty of ground to cover, and an initial spy from the pickup helps me identify the likeliest locations. Though the estate is dotted with high seats, I'll be doing things the old-fashioned way with a footstalk. The frosty morning slowly gives way to glorious sunshine as I grab the Browning rifle and pick up the Polaris. There are certainly worse places to be out. This isn't just a speculative stalk. The row population has been causing no small amount of tree damage, so I need to get results. Luckily, regular reconnaissance has given me a good idea where to head. My suspicions are confirmed as we bump a buck early on. I won't get a chance at this one, but we're clearly in the right place. The stalk is on. Sticking to the hedge line to minimise my profile to any watching deer, I make my way to a better vantage point. When I get there, there aren't any row, but there is a clear sign of browsing damage in the hedge and an obvious deer seat underneath. This could be where our earlier book bolted from. The stalk continues, and that's when things get really interesting. Just as the frost eased, we started to see the deer. A uh, big buck was just over the boundary. He, he sort of curled away from us and was interested in what we were doing. It's over the boundary, <laughs> you can't do anything about it, but... Wow, what a buck. That buck's not coming back, but the chance isn't gone yet. There's another buck coming in. I think he's following the buck that has just gone past us. But the minute this one comes over onto the boundary, we'll come over the bog, then it's ours. There's a clear backstop, and the buck is well within range. But if it doesn't come to my side of the boundary, there'll be no shot. He came, we just watched him, watched him, watched him. I had to stalk up the bark. And a nice stalk up the bark and just waited for him to come. The minute he put his feet to, or his hoofs over the boundary, uh, he stood, looked a perfect shot. With the boat clearly down on the spot, we give him a few moments and make quick work of the approach to confirm death. Well, it's the last day of April and uh, what a fine start uh, to the day. Uh, sunrise in the east on the cliff top here. Uh, we're right on the boundary here and uh, the farmer has been suffering some, some tree damage uh, to some young trees he'd put in. And uh, this is a cracking buck. Uh, it's a young buck. Uh, it would have been a nice one to leave to get a bit older actually. Uh, but he's been uh, doing a bit of damage, which is clear to see. A little bit of pilot error on my part. Uh, the bullet was a bit high, uh, put him down, but uh, yeah, job done. A lightning quick Gralic follows, then I head back to my start point and bring in the Polaris for extraction. Oh, 
all in all a textbook stock, but I'm not done yet. Fast forward to that evening and I'm back out again. This time a high seat vigil is on the cards. Wasting no time in getting to my chosen spot, I get ready to see what the evening brings. No books yet, but I can pass the time with an exercise in deer sex identification, thanks to this urinating doe. With the doe on her way, things soon start to happen. We've kept the film short because we don't get it on camera, but I soon secure another book with a well-placed shot that falls after a short death dash. takes a bit of searching through cover, but in a few minutes I've located the beast which didn't go far. Well it's a uh, last minute book again really. Long vigil in the high seat, plenty to see, uh, everything but the book and then I was just thinking about giving up and uh, climbing down and then he just nosed his way out and just a shadow there behind the trees and it was just turning his head what did it for me and uh, he just walked on three or four more yards, stopped and turned couldn't make a decision, couldn't see his antlers too well and uh, as he turned I could see that he was quite long spikes on him and uh, I made the decision as a cool buck. Good shot, straight in behind the shoulder, he ran maybe 30-40 metres straight down in the woods, could hear him thrashing, knew it, knew it was good and uh, we got the result, five minutes walking and uh, the cameraman found him. <laughs> That's two in the larder, but the cameraman insists on another outing to make amends for him missing the kill shot. So I'm out yet again the following evening. There's plentiful sign of deer today, with both does and bucks making an appearance before I even get out of the ATV. One buck in particular catches my attention, laid up in a set-aside field. I watch it for a long time, waiting for it to make a move. But when it finally gets up, it's not the one I'm after, and I pass up the shot. Back to plan A. I'm straight off to my chosen box for the evening. Can I make it three bucks in three outings? This is a prime position, with a wide arc of fire over two fields. Being in a high seat is always a pleasure, and though there are no roads to be seen, there's still plenty of fauna to keep me occupied. The evening wears on without incident. Finally, a buck makes an appearance, browsing along the tree line. This is a perfect book to take, but it's on the move, and I don't want to risk a chancy shot. That's when Murphy's Law intervenes. I finally get the perfect opportunity, just when the cameraman has lost the book. So it's another shot off camera, but the book is clearly down, the round doing its job admirably. All in all, I've managed to prove I'm every bit crimp is equal with a hard-fought Roebuck hat trick. That ought to keep the Kiwi quiet. What a cracking end to a late spring evening. Uh, three outings, three books, and a superb book to finish with. A very old stager, 
uh, big thick coronets. Uh, he's a little bit thin in the antler. I, I expected him really to be a bit thicker, but uh, a superb buck nevertheless. Uh, good heart shot, straight in there behind the shoulder. Uh, the cameraman him perfectly framed and then uh, turned the camera off, hence we didn't get the kill shot. Uh, but he run 30, 40 metres. Game over. Perfect. I do like it when a plan comes together. A fine start to the Roebuck season for me there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Excitement is building for the UK Game Fair on the 22nd to the 24th of July at Stoneley. Last week, a troop of national and regional journalists descended on the showground for a track day courtesy of Explore 4x4. The 4x4 course was built by Land Rover as a proving ground for their vehicles, and you'll be able to ride around for yourself at the show as part of the UK Game Fair's experience campaign. Don't miss your chance to get tickets. Head to ukgamefair.com now. Amber Hill is warming up for the Olympics nicely. She's been on an international podium again, this time taking bronze in the ISSF World Cup in San Marino. The skeet shooter showed incredible nerve to win an 18-target sudden-death shoot-off against China's Wei Ning to take the medal. Sutia Jutaloamit of Thailand took the gold medal, and Italy's Diana Bacosi got silver. There'll be a full report in Clay Shooting magazine. Staying with Clay Shooting, the Clay Shooting Classic is upon us. The biggest independent sporting shoot in Europe starts this Wednesday and continues through to Saturday when the winner will be crowned and take home a Zolli Z Sport High Rib. All the entries on Saturday are full, but you can still make a last minute entry for the other days. Get yourself down to High Lodge and be in with a chance of winning. Want to get some shooting tuition from the best in the business? Check out our one-off video with Prince Franz Albrecht von Ertigen Spielberg. The star of the Wild Boar Fever films, Prince Albrecht gave our director some exclusive advice on stance and technique for taking on driven boar. It all took place in Swarovski's shooting cinema, a top secret facility in Bavaria. Click the link on screen to see for yourself. And finally, a British shooting ground has been sold for almost £2 million. The buyers previously ran Prescott Shooting Ground and say they want to turn Austin into a centre of excellence for shooting. Former owner Charlie Denoon held the ground for 20 years, but has decided it's time to retire. He said he was sure Austin would continue to thrive under its new stewardship. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And it's just a few weeks to go to the UK Game Fair at Stoneley Park, Warwickshire. You can buy your tickets online here by following the link below. This has been The Shooting Show.